Yo, what's up? I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to review Birds of Prey by Wilbur Smith. Now, Wilbur Smith writes epic African adventure novels. That's what he's known for. And that's what you're getting every time. I've got my entire Wilbur Smith collection down here, and I'm going to show you the whole collection here in a second. But let's talk about this book briefly first, and let's just go over a little bit of its history, a little bit of my history with this writer, and um, some other things. This book came out in 1997. This was the very first Wilbur Smith book I ever read. Keep in mind, Wilbur Smith has been writing novels since the 1950s, and he's still alive writing novels today. Now, his most famous series is his Courtney Family Saga. It's probably 14 or 15 books long, and it it's just the saga of a family that is co colonializing South Africa. They're English, and they colonialize South Africa in around the 1600s, and the saga takes us from the 1600s all the way up to the present day. And there's 15, and it just follows the, the family. It's a family saga, family drama about Africa and English people, you know, colonizing it. Now, like I said, he started in the 1950s writing his books. The first Courtney book came out in 1964, and um, the, the saga is still going to this day. Let's talk about the cover. We always talk about the covers first because I love graphic design. I love cover illustration. I think this is great because this book is set in 1667. It is one of the very first books in the Courtney. Actually, it's chronologically, it is the actual first book in the Courtney saga. It takes place in 1667. It uh, has a lot to do with pirates. That's why we've got the pirate theme. The cover wraps around. Now, what's cool on the inside flap is we've got these colorful maps of, you know, South Africa. On the back, we've got this colorful map of, I think they're both of South Africa. Yeah, it's about the same map. Anyway, great package, great design. Love the way that it's put together. Now, let me just drop down here and show you the entire Courtney saga. I've got all of my Wilbur Smith book collection here on the bottom shelf. There it is. So Birds of Prey is book number one. Let's see, we've got it right there. And then the rest of the Courtney saga, I've got the entire thing on the bottom shelf here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. You know, like I said, there's a bunch of books in the saga anyway. I got a lot of Wilbur Smith books. He's a great, a great writer. What's this one about here? Let me put my camera back on the stand. And we will get going with the review of Birds of Prey. So, Sir Francis Courtney, 1667. He is a dude from England, and he's got a ship. And he um, has a son, Hal, and they are off on an adventure around Cape Horn, South Africa. I think it's Cape Horn. I don't know. That might be South America. It is Cape of Good Hope. The Cape of Good Hope is the dangerous cape that goes around South Africa. The Cape Horn is South America. We're dealing with South Africa here. They're on a ship, and they run into some slaver ships. One of the things that is great about Wilbur Smith books is he writes some of the greatest adventure novels of all time. Not only that, but he does not shy away from the description of the grim, gritty, and gruesome things that happened in our history. And the Courtney's, they run into some slaver ships, and the way these slave ships are described is horrifying. In fact, these slave ships were so horrifying that you could smell them from miles away. They knew when they were about to come across a slave ship by the smell in the air. It was Those slave ships were so unkempt and so foul and dirty and with so much death and disease on them that the literal stench of the ship could be smelt hundreds of miles across the ocean. And that's how they knew that they had come across slave ships. That's just in the beginning. And then things just spiral into more and more just almost horrific. It's almost like a horror novel. One of the things that um, 
Wilbur Smith does is he writes not only are his dramas about family dramas and man against man, but much of the time it's man against nature, whether it's man against the sea or man against um, different animals that they run across in Africa. Like there's some great scenes with lions and crocodiles in here, just gut-wrenching scenes. And then we've got Hey, heat. They're fighting the heat. They're fighting the creatures in the sea. And they're fighting just the sea and nature itself. And I think a lot of fantasy writers, myself included, now I could, could take a lesson from how much action and adventure Wilbur Smith just packs into every single African adventure novel he writes. And not only that, but he doesn't shy away from the rated R parts of that. And he doesn't shy away from just showing you how cruel nature can be to not only itself but to mankind and creatures the animals that live on the planet you know and what i'm saying is every fantasy writer can take including myself can take lessons from a wilbur smith book on how to keep the action going and the pace just always breakneck action especially when we're writing in epic fantasy worlds or historical fiction worlds like south africa i mean this is how you learn how to write non-stop heart pounding have non-stop heart pounding bloody adventure like Wilbur Smith and we all got to take lessons from this guy all of us and if you just want to read great action adventure books this is where to start you will get more action and adventure in one Wilbur Smith book than five Robert Jordan books combined than five George R.R. R. Martin books combined than five of my own books combined I mean this guy just knows how to do it and not only okay so that's kind of gushing about just grand overall themes. What's the book about? Sir Francis Courtney is on a ship with his son Hal, a young boy. So this is kind of a coming of age tale. They've got their African friend, um, a boli who helps tutor young Hal in sword fighting and just fighting in general. I mean, he's a badass guy. And then they've got also that some of the other players are Katrinka, who is a sort of the young, sort of a forbidden love interest of young Hal. And um, then we've got Remnants of the Knights Templar. This came out way before the Da Vinci Code came out. And I'm surprised at how much Da Vinci Code-esque this book was when it goes into the history of the Crusades. And I mean, this is, book is set in 1667, you know, some four or 500 years after the Crusades. But the remnants of the Crusades still exist in the characters' minds. And they remember the quests for the Holy Grail. They remember the Knights Templar and the Masonic Lodges, and they remember all of those rituals. And they and young young Hal is inducted into one of these sort of secret Illuminati societies on the pirate ship that he's on. It's just just so much juicy goodness in this book. Now I haven't really talked about the plot yet, so let's just let me just read the inside cover. Just to give you a general idea, then we'll then we'll wrap up the video here. So, um, so uh, the year is sixteen sixty seven. Sir Francis Courtney and his son Hal are on patrol in their fighting caravel of off of the uh, fighting caravel. It must be some type of ship. I've never heard that before. It was never called a fighting caravel anywhere in the book. Anyway, off the cope of off of the Cape of South Africa, they are lying in wait for one of the treasure-laden galleons of the Dutch East India Company, returning from the Orient. Yeah, they're pirates. They're going to steal this stuff. So begins a quest for adventure and spoils of war that sweeps them from the settlements of Good Hope to the southern tip of Africa to the Great Horn of Ethiopia, far to the north, at a time when international maritime law permitted acts of piracy, rape, and murder, and otherwise bad things you know i mean wilbur smith introduces us to the generational of the court the generations of the courtney's yeah this is the very first book in the courtney saga and like i say it it follows the courtney family as they sort of settle in south africa try to colonialize africa and just every one of these books like i said there's 13 or 14 of them in the courtney saga just each one of them is harrowing in its own right and we're going to be rereading re re i'm going to be rereading each one of them for the channel and dropping a review over time so pay attention because these books i gotta tell you man these books are dope there ain't no other word for it
I mean, I give Birds of Prey my introduction to Wilbur Smith. And since I read this in 1997, I've read every Wilbur Smith book. Collect, I've collected every single one of them. Not just the Courtney saga. He's got the Ballantine saga. He's got the uh, Ancient Egypt saga. Oh my God. There's so many. There's so many, folks. And we're going to get to each one of them on this channel. So stay tuned. Wilbur Smith, Birds of Prey, 10 out of 10 stars.